Mike, we're doing another What I Love About Comics video. Uh, so tell us another thing you love about comics. Well, one of the creators that I've always liked is a guy who's mainly known as a writer, but got his start as an artist and writer-artist. A guy by the name of Bill Wilmingham. Most people know Bill Wilmingham mainly from his work on Fables, which he wrote for 150 issues, and then uh, 50 issues of Jack of Fables, the spinoff that he wrote with a uh, co-writer, Matt Sturgis. Um, but Bill Wilmingham has been doing comics for a lot longer than Fables. He got his start uh, back, way back in the day, where with um, actually TSR, where he was as a staff artist, and he did a lot of modules for them. But where comics people know him is back in the day they did a Dungeons and Dragons advertisement that was done as a comic strip that was on the back of a lot of uh, books, and Bill Wilmingham provided the art on those. Now that was. Obviously, you know, he was doing gaming work and advertising, but that's where people started seeing his stuff. And so he doesn't consider it his comic work, but I do know people that collect just trying to get those. Then he broke into the comics field with a creation of his own, Elementals. Now, the Elementals were this wonderful concept of a superhero group that uh, was published by Kamiko. He had four main characters, Vortex, Mammoth, Fathom, and Morningstar. Um, each of them was based on one of the four traditional elements, but there was a nice little twist to it. They were all immortal because they were all dead. And everyone in this world with superpowers was immortal or had magic tied up in their origin. You know, there was a vampire that they fought who was a supervillain who went up by the name of Captain Cadaver. There was a were-rat, you know, so a lycanthrope. All of this great stuff, and it was this huge war between the forces of evil trying to take over the world with these four people who are superstars because they're superheroes, design, and they are there to save the world. But now they're dead, they'll never age, and what kind of problems does that bring? Elementals was a great series. Uh, Kamiko did it, and Bill Wilmingham has had fun with it since, because he no doesn't own the rights. Uh, a guy named Andrew Rev bought Kamiko, and Bill Wilmingham would love to get those rights back. And every year on Andrew Rev's birthday, Bill Wilmingham would offer to buy the rights back for one dollar, because he figures that's all they're worth now. Um, and there's be more on that later. Uh, I said would, because right now, he doesn't know where Andrew Rev is. Andrew Rev has dropped off the face of the earth. He hasn't been able to find him. So that stopped about six or seven years ago. But if we find out where Andrew Rev is, Bill Wilmingham will, would love to restart that. Um, now, Wilmingham wrote and drew this. He is an excellent artist, very stylized, but he drew it. Um, then from there, he proceeded to, uh, to go on working on all sorts of things. He's, he's done a, uh, several issues of Green Lantern as an artist, including the first part of Emerald Twilight, where Hal goes crazy and becomes a villain. Um, he did a series, an 11-issue series, and that was purposeful because everyone does 12-issue series, uh, but an 11-issue series spinning out of Elementals called Ironwood. Now, you won't see that in our back issues, 
because he wrote and drew it, but it was an adult series from Eros Comic. Um, it was kind of late because Bill Wilmingham started having problems finding, you know, he had this great fantasy story he's telling, but he was having problems finding places to break the story to have a sex scene in every issue. Uh, so that's something that most people don't know that he's done. Uh, he also did uh, a creator-owned series for Fantagraphics called Coventry, which was another fantastic attempt at a uh, creator-owned fantasy that only lasted three issues for all sorts of reasons. Um, Wilmingham did all of this stuff and then disappeared from comics for a while. Uh, was actually working in Las Vegas as a proposition player, which is someone who is good enough at gambling that they can make a living at it, but just barely. And so the casinos will hire people at minimum wage or maybe a little bit less than minimum. You know, give them some money for a stake to be sitting at the poker tables playing poker with their own money. If they win, they get to keep their winnings. If they lose, they lose their money. But that way there's always someone there for when a gambler comes in and wants to play poker. There's a couple of people playing, not I'm sitting at a table by myself. Um... Now, why did I mention that Willingham did that? Because he turned around and took his life history and placed that into a story for Vertigo, uh, creator-owned, called Proposition Player, which was the story of someone who works as a proposition player in one of these casinos and, as a joke, takes an IOU for someone's soul. You know, because, well, okay, yeah, I want some money and they want something. I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give you an IOU for my soul. I'll owe you my soul. And then some of the other people in, in the uh, casino find that's funny, so they give them IOUs for their soul too. And the next thing you know, mythological gods are showing up because he has started collecting souls He's building power in the Pantheon and they and everyone wants his little bit. Great story. And I mentioned I was going to come back to um, Elementals. Here's where it comes in. Because, okay, when Bill Wilmingham started this, he wanted to do a really cool advertising campaign. And he came up with one. Now, unfortunately, DC said no, but that's okay. Um, because, see, there was there was this uh, book from Top Cow, later Aspen, uh, with a creator named Michael Turner. You've probably heard of him. Great artist. Michael Turner created this character, Fathom. And... This is one part of the reason that Bill Willingham says that elementals are only worth a dollar. Because if you me if you remember when I mentioned his characters, one of his characters was named Fathom. And his Fathom was this girl who wore a bathing suit as her costume and could breathe underwater and control water. Fifteen years later, Fathom becomes a huge hit when Michael Turner introduces a girl who's wearing a bathing suit can breathe underwater and control water. Wilmingham feels that that was copyright violation, but since he didn't own the copyright, he couldn't do anything with it. So anyway, when he goes to do Proposition Player, the height of Fathom's popularity with Michael Turner, and Bill Wilmingham wanted to do this great ad talking about how, you know, last year, Michael Turner shocked the comic world, introducing this wonderful character, Fathom, and going through the uh, all the uh, all of what Fathom can do. And then talking about 15 years ago, Bill Willingham shocked the comic industry by introducing this character named Fathom, and here's all the similarities. 
You want to know what Michael Turner is going to be working on 15 years from now? Read Bill Willingham's Proposition Player. And DC decided that wasn't very uh, political and, and correct, and so they didn't do it. But I would love to see it. Um, okay, anyway, back to Willingham. Okay, so he's done Ironwood, Coventry, Elementals, runs on Green Lantern as artist. What else has he done? Well, his big thing, and what everyone knows him for now, is fables. Let's take all of the fairy tales. They all happened in other worlds, and this is what happened afterward. They're now living in New York City in a small block that they call Fable Town because the adversary took over their worlds and their refugees in New York. They still have their powers. Well, to an extent. The more people know the stories, the more power the fables have. This series from Vertigo ran 150 issues. That's a really long run. One writer. For the most part, one artist. There were a couple of villains. Excellent series. I highly recommend it. And its spin-offs, which Wilmingham was very uh, crucial to. Jack of Fables, which ran 50 issues Wilming that Wilmingham wrote with uh, co-writer Matt Sturgis. And then Fairest and some Cinderella miniseries. Along the way, while he was doing that, Wilmingham also did mainstream DC stuff. You know, a short run of Robin, three years, that introduced... Um, a female Robin, Stephanie Brown. Um, yeah, in his story, Tim Drake stepped down for various reasons, and Stephanie Brown took over. Uh, you probably know her as Spoiler, or later as Batgirl. And right now, in the current DC stuff, still as Spoiler. But this is where she's shown in her first solo series. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, also... As DC was getting ready for one of their big crossovers, um, Infinite Crisis, they did four different miniseries that led up to it, each one six issues. Bill Wilmingham was responsible for Day of Vengeance, which was all about the mystic side of the DC universe. Characters like the Spectre, Doctor Fate, and all this evil that was building. He wrote the six issue miniseries, the one-shot special afterwards, and spinning out of it, 18 issues of Shadow Pact, featuring the characters that he brought to prominence again in the Day of Vengeance in their own series. Great series. I highly recommend checking it out for anyone who wants to read really cool stuff that's a less, featuring lesser-known characters in the DCU. Uh, other stuff that he's done that people don't always think about. He had a, a good solid run of JSA, a, a full year of Justice Society of America. Uh, issues 29 through 40 featuring those original Justice Society characters, um, you know, the Golden Age characters in modern day. Right now, you can see him, uh, let's see, he just finished a uh, run of uh, Legendary for Dynamite, which was taking all of Dynamite's licensed characters and throwing them together in a steampunk world. And right now, going back to his fantasy roots, doing an original story for um, uh, First Comics Devil's Do, Lark's Killer. And... On that, on some of the covers, there's an alternate cover on each book, you'll see Wilmingham doing his art. All great stuff, stuff that I would highly recommend. It's cool, it's interesting, it's a neat take on what superheroes can and can't be. Bill Wilmingham is one of the people that I love reading and one of the reasons that I love comics.